Hi there. In this power, we'll be working with lists and repeats. Now here's the example we're going to build next. Here in the preview, we can see this list of fruits. Very simple stuff. Later in the video, we'll also build a version with star ratings to demonstrate repeats. Going back to the interface builder, we can see that the list appears to be a paragraph component, but it has this ghostly trail to it. This is a visual indication that this component is being repeated. Looking at the properties, we can see that the repeat with property has been bound to a page variable called fruits. Furthermore, we can see that the schema for this variable is list of objects. This is important because we can only bind repeat with to data that has the schema list of objects. Okay, now I'll show you how to do this from scratch. Okay, so we'll start with a blank page. To create a list, we must first have some data. To have some data, let's start by creating a page variable. Let's call this variable fruits, like in the example. We're going to be binding this variable to a repeat with property, so we know the schema has to be list of object. So we'll set the type as list and the item type as object. For now, we'll just add one property to the object, name. Note that the exact schema of properties does not matter. Here we just happen to have name and ID as the properties. The ID is automatically included in the schema by Composer. It is very useful for identifying items in larger lists, but in this example we'll be fine leaving it empty. And then we'll just input some initial values, banana, orange and kiwi. There, now we have a list of fruit in the fruits page variable. Back in the interface builder, let's use this paragraph component and turn it into a list of fruits. We'll do that by going into the properties of the component and binding the repeat with property to the fruits page variable. We can see now that we have a ghostly trail there. However, each repeated component still has exactly the same content. To change this, let's bind the content property of the component too. Since we bound the repeat with property, we can now access a special type of binding called property of data item in repeat. Here we can choose one of the object properties from the list we bound to repeat with. Let's choose name to display the name for each fruit object. And that's how you create lists out of anything really. Just make sure your data is in the required schema of list of objects. Now there is another slightly different case for repeat, which is when you don't have a list of items, but you'd simply want to repeat a component for some number of times. For example, let's say our fruits would have star ratings. In this case, we would want to repeat the stars based on the ratings as numbers. So let's go back to the fruits page variable and create a new property in the object called stars. We'll set the type as number and then let's enter some initial values like 2, 3, 5 and so on. You can customize the numbers based on your fruit preferences. Okay. So let's remove our existing list and let's create a new component structure that's going to facilitate having the name and star rating side by side. Let's start with a row component. It has two cells. In the left cell, we'll drop a paragraph component for the name. And in the right, we'll drop a container and then inside the container, an icon component. So just make sure you have the structure on the right now. Row, cell, container, icon. Okay, then we'll bind the row components repeat with to the fruit page variable. Then for the name, we'll be able to bind the paragraph content to the name property. With the star rating, we want to have the icon repeat for each star count. However, we can only repeat list of objects type schemas and our star rating is only a number. To resolve this, let's bind the icon components 
repeat with to a formula. Then we'll use the formula to create a list of objects in place. The formula looks like this. Repeat, first argument, empty object, second argument, current stars. What this formula does is that it takes the first argument, which is an empty object, and then repeats it by the given number, in this case the star rating, finally returning all the repeated objects as a list. And since this formula is bound to the repeat with property of the icon component, the component will now be repeated with the list returned by the formula. As we can see, the stars are now repeating according to the numbers from the fruit object. However, instead of lining up horizontally, they are stacking vertically. Here is where the container we put into that cell comes in. Let's use the tree view to make sure we are selecting the container and let's go into the style tab and set the container layout to horizontal and let's also make sure to justify content to the left. Now we have our star ratings displayed as star counts lining up horizontally. I hope you enjoyed this power up and let's meet again soon.